Jabir ibn Hayyan was an Islamic scholar of the Middle Ages who is considered the father of alchemy and one of the founders of pharmacology and modern chemistry. His figure and even his name are shrouded in mist and uncertainty, which fuel his myth. Legend attributes to him the authorship of between 300 and more than 1,000 works on philosophy, alchemy, and chemistry. His work is said to have shaped the very foundations of modern chemistry. But here's the catch. No one's quite sure who he really was. Was he a genius, a myth, or maybe both? The mysterious alchemist whose life is a blend of fact and fable. He wrote about turning metals into gold, creating life in a lab, and even dabbled in the secrets of the universe. His influence stretches across centuries, yet his true story feels like a puzzle that's never fully been solved. In today's video, we dive headfirst into the mystery of Jabir ibn Hayyan, peeling back the layers of legend to reveal the man who might have been the greatest scientist you've never heard of. Stick around, you don't want to miss this. Born in AD 721 in what is now Iran and spent most of his life in the city of Kufa, Iraq. He is said to have studied first in Yemen under the tutelage of the sage Harbi al-Himyari and later in Kufa as a student of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq where he learned alchemy, chemistry, pharmacy, philosophy, medicine and astronomy. He became the court alchemist and physician during the reign of Caliph Harun al-Rashid and died in Kufa in AD 815 at the age of 94. Jabir ibn Hayyan's contributions flourished within the cultural and intellectual environment of the Golden Age of Islam, a period spanning roughly from the 8th to the 14th century. This era was marked by a remarkable surge in scientific, philosophical and artistic achievements across the Islamic world. The House of Wisdom, or Bayt al-Hekmah in Baghdad, established by Caliph al-Mamun, served as a hub for scholars from various disciplines. Jabir's work thrived in this environment where the pursuit of knowledge was highly valued and supported by rulers and patrons. His innovative approaches to alchemy and chemistry were part of a broader movement that sought to understand and harness the natural world through empirical observation and experimentation. Another thing that could be attributed to his success both as a scholar and a scientist is the translation movement as it fascinated the broader exchange of knowledge between the Islamic world and Europe. During the 9th and 10th centuries, numerous works from Greek, Persian and Indian sources were translated into Arabic, enriching the intellectual landscape of the Islamic world. Similarly, Arabic texts, including Jabir's writings, were later translated into Latin, making them accessible to European scholars. This transfer of knowledge was instrumental in the development of European science and medicine. For instance, the Latin Geber texts attributed to Jabir became foundational for European alchemists and chemists. The translation movement not only spread Jabir's innovative ideas, but also fostered a cross-cultural exchange that significantly influenced the scientific and philosophical thought of both the Islamic world and Europe. This interchange laid the groundwork for the scientific revolution and the advancement of empirical science in later centuries. In the past, the understanding of natural phenomena and materials was often based on theoretical speculation and philosophical reasoning with less emphasis on practical experimentation. Jabir introduced several groundbreaking concepts and methodologies that transformed the study of matter and chemistry. Firstly, he emphasized the importance of practical knowledge acquired through hands-on experience and experimentation. This approach marked one of the earliest adoptions of the experimental method in the Islamic world, predating its widespread use in Europe. For example, Jabir conducted numerous experiments to understand the properties of metals and their transformations. He would heat metals under controlled conditions, observing changes in their color, malleability, and other characteristics. Through these experiments, 
He developed theories about the transmutation of metals, believing that base metals could be transformed into noble metals, like gold or silver, through specific chemical processes. This hands-on approach allowed him to gather empirical data that challenged and complemented existing theoretical knowledge, setting a precedent for experimental science in the Islamic world. Jabir's innovations significantly shaped the evolution of chemistry and alchemy. His emphasis on empirical observation and experimentation influenced generations of scholars, shifting the focus from purely theoretical contemplation to practical investigation. This approach laid the foundation for the systematic description of chemical processes and reactions seen in later works, such as the Latin Geber texts, Pseudo-Geber Corpus. These texts provided detailed instructions for various chemical techniques and the construction of necessary apparatus, becoming an indispensable source of knowledge for scientists and craftsmen in the centuries that followed. Moreover, Jabir's work contributed to the advancement of numerous industries and crafts. The practical applications described in his writings and those of the Pseudo-Geber Corpus, from metallurgy and glass production, to textile dyeing and leather treatment had a profound impact on technological innovation and the improvement of manufacturing processes. During the time of Jabir ibn Hayyan, alchemy flourished in the Arab world as part of a broader intellectual and scientific movement. The Golden Age of Islam, which spanned roughly from the 8th to the 14th century, was marked by a remarkable surge in scientific, philosophical, and artistic achievements. Alchemy, with its blend of mystical and practical elements, played a significant role in this intellectual renaissance. One of the main reasons why Jabir ibn Hayyan is considered an alchemist rather than a chemist as per modern times is that he developed influential theories on the transmutation of metals, believing that base metals could be transformed into noble metals like gold or silver through specific chemical processes. Central to this belief was the concept of the philosopher's stone, a legendary substance thought to possess the power to facilitate such transformations. Jabir's ideas laid the groundwork for later alchemical pursuits and contributed to the development of experimental chemistry. He also introduced and standardized many chemical terms and concepts that are still in use today. His work on the classification of substances and the description of chemical processes helped to establish a common language for chemists, facilitating the exchange of knowledge and the advancement of the field. For example, he classified substances into categories such as animal, vegetable and mineral, and described their intrinsic properties like warmth, moisture and dryness. He also introduced terms for various chemical processes such as calcination, heating a substance to drive off volatile components, sublimation, converting a solid directly into a gas, and distillation separating components of a mixture by heating and condensing the vapors. These terms and concepts help to establish a common language for chemists, facilitating the exchange of knowledge and the advancement of the field. Jabir ibn Hayyan significantly contributed to the field of pharmacology through his extensive experiments with various substances. In his work, Kitab al-Sabin, The Book of Seventy, he developed numerous medicines and elixirs by combining different chemicals and minerals. For instance, he explored the medicinal properties of metals like gold and silver, believing they could be used to create potent remedies. Jabir stated, The noblest metals, when properly prepared, can cure the most intractable diseases. His work on the preparation of chemical compounds, such as salts and oxides, laid the foundation for later advancements in pharmaceutical science. His experiments with acids and bases also contributed to the understanding of how these substances could be used in medical treatments. Jabir extensively studied the medicinal properties of plants, leading to the development of various herbal remedies. In his book, Kitab al-Sumum, The Book of Poisons, 
He conducted detailed investigations into the therapeutic effects of different herbs and documented their uses in treating a wide range of ailments. For example, he studied plants like aloe vera for their healing properties and various other herbs for their antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, and analgesic effects. Jabir wrote, Nature has provided us with an abundance of remedies in the form of plants, and it is our duty to explore and utilize these gifts. His writings on herbal medicine provided valuable insights into the natural remedies available at the time and influenced the practice of traditional medicine in the Islamic world and beyond. Jabir's emphasis on empirical observation and the systematic testing of herbal remedies set a precedent for the scientific study of medicinal plants. His contributions, however, aren't limited to the field of science. In fact, Jabir ibn Hayyan developed the theory of balance, which posited that all substances are composed of four basic elements, fire, air, water, and earth. This is, of course, controversial, as many cultures are believed to have observed this. However, at the very least, many scholars attribute it to him. According to this theory, the properties of a substance could be altered by changing the balance of these elements. Jabir believed that by manipulating the proportions of these elements, one could transform base metals into noble metals like gold or silver. In his work, Kitab al-Khawas al-Kabir, The Great Book of Properties, Jabir wrote, the transmutation of metals is achieved by adjusting the balance of the four elements within them, thereby altering their fundamental nature. This theory laid the groundwork for later alchemical and chemical theories, emphasizing the importance of understanding the composition and properties of substances. It is also important to note that Jabir's alchemical writings incorporated a significant amount of numerology and symbolism, adding a mystical dimension to his scientific work. He believed that numbers held intrinsic power and could be used to decode the secrets of nature. For example, Jabir often used the number seven, which he considered sacred, in his alchemical formulas and processes. In his book, Kitab al-Ajar, The Book of Stones, he stated, the number seven is the key to understanding the mysteries of the universe, as it represents the harmony and balance of all things. Additionally, Jabir employed various symbols and allegorical language to convey complex alchemical concepts, making his work both scientifically insightful and spiritually profound. His writings, known as the Latin Gaber texts or the Pseudo-Gaber corpus, introduced systematic descriptions of chemical processes and reactions to European scholars. These texts became a cornerstone of European alchemical literature, influencing prominent figures such as Roger Bacon and Paracelsus. Roger Bacon, known for his emphasis on experimental science, incorporated many of Jabir's ideas into his own works, while Paracelsus, the father of toxicology, built upon Jabir's theories and methods to advance medicine and chemistry. In the Islamic world, Jabir's experimental approach shifted the focus from theoretical contemplation to empirical investigation, inspiring scholars like Al-Razi and Al-Kindi. Al-Razi conducted extensive experiments in medicine and chemistry, and Al-Kindi adopted Jabir's methodologies in his philosophical and scientific studies. This emphasis on empirical science fostered a rich intellectual environment, leading to significant advancements across various disciplines. Jabir's legacy underscores the importance of experimental methodology in the pursuit of knowledge and the advancement of science in both Europe and the Islamic world. The Pseudo-Geber Corpus, his collection of Latin texts, has sparked significant controversy and debate. They played a crucial role in disseminating alchemical and chemical knowledge in Europe, but their authorship remains contentious. Some scholars argue that the texts were not written by Jabir himself, but by later authors who adopted his name to lend credibility to their work. 
Others suggest that the texts are a compilation of Jabir's ideas, along with contributions from various authors over time, highlighting the complex nature of textual transmission and the evolution of scientific knowledge across cultures. Despite these controversies, the corpus remains a valuable source of early chemical and alchemical knowledge. His work continues to be relevant in modern chemistry and is the subject of ongoing study by historians of science. His emphasis on empirical observation, experimentation, and the systematic description of chemical processes laid the groundwork for the scientific method. Many of the terms and concepts he introduced, such as distillation, calcination, and the classification of substances, remain fundamental to the field of chemistry. Moreover, Jabir's theories on the transmutation of metals and the balance of elements have historical significance, illustrating early attempts to understand and manipulate matter. Historians of science continue to analyze Jabir's contributions to uncover the roots of modern chemistry and to understand the intellectual and cultural context in which his ideas developed. His legacy serves as a reminder of the importance of cross-cultural exchange and the enduring value of empirical inquiry in the advancement of scientific knowledge. If you found this video entertaining, please like, comment and subscribe as your support will means the world to us.